All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. We're so excited to be back for another uh, Thursday night as we've changed off from Wednesday to Thursday. Most of you have probably noticed we have moved over to Thursday night to accommodate our Florida PTAs who like to have their engagement on Wednesday nights. So we hope they appreciate that. Um, I have two incredibly special and very knowledgeable and experienced guests tonight. And we're going to have um, we're going to talk about general meetings. Blah, blah, blah. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but it is exciting and it's extremely important because there's a lot of things we're going to cover tonight that you that many of you have questions about and we want to make sure that uh, we get ahead of these and answer those questions. We are going to focus as well on nominating committee uh, and how to create a nominating committee and how it works. Uh, we have plenty of information on that. Nominating committees must be done. They are part of your bylaws, so we're not trying to give you extra work. It is part of what you have to do. And we're going to hit all of those. And we invite you in the chat to ask questions, any questions at all. We have three presidents on here, two that actually know what they're doing and me. So we'll be able to answer hopefully most of your questions. But please ask them in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. We're going to definitely focus on general meetings and the nominations. Before we get to that, uh, we ask you to uh, go ahead and get comfortable, get uh, get ready. We're going to hit some announcements. We have some really cool stuff coming up, and I'm going to turn it over real quick to Amy Marie with some really neat things. Hey. Hi, Frank. Hey. Amy Marie here. Um, all about our upcoming events. In February, we're celebrating Founders Day, which is February 17th. Um, but what we're doing, same as we did in previous years, uh, Founders Day clothing drive for Oasis Network. So it's going to be the first through the 12th of February. All the details are on our Facebook page and on our website. So if you, I'm talking too fast as usual, um, you can go there and check it out. Um, but we're gonna sign up Go on, go download, get all your information in there so we know you're participating. Have a clothing drive, and then you can drop off all your clothing at Oasis in the, at the South Tampa location on the 12th. There is a very small group on the 12th to do a service day as well. Um, and I did send that out in an email. Um, and so it is, it, I think there was only about 10 people. She has got like an outside space and an inside space that everybody can really spread out. Um, but we'll be there for donation drop off. So, and they always, they always count it and everything for us. So it's really awesome. But if you don't know anything about Oasis Network, um, they supply all of our social workers with a closet so that they can supply our students with clothing and toiletries and uniforms and all sorts of cool stuff. So um, they're a nice little small team, but they've got two locations here. In Tampa, they have one at Tampa Palms and then one at the South Tampa location, but it's, um, they do great things with very little and they're amazing, amazing uh, people. So we are so excited. I think this is the third year we've done this with them or maybe even the fourth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's been a while. Um, last year, we, we kind of did this virtual sign up and send pictures. And um, so I guess we were preparing for a uh, pandemic. We didn't realize it, but we were. So <laughs> we're all ready now to uh, have it virtually again. So please sign up. It's a great way to get your, um, your families involved. It's a program, you know, we all need programs. So, and it's a great cause. So Founders Day. And they don't uh, take, they don't just take regular clothes. They take everything because they take everything because they donate to, yeah. say you put a bathing suit in there, they give it to the county pools. If you yeah. get a suit, they give it to, um, shelters that they're yeah. learning to how to interview for jobs so it, throw everything you have in there yeah they're, they're great because they have connections to all different types of organizations within the community so if they if you you get they get don donated baby clothes or something where they can't use those for students they have organizations that they work with that they so everything gets where it needs to go um i've actually worked and sorted in there and um it's it's a really cool uh, cool place and uh, cool people. So um, what else? Calendar on our website. We're doing my darndest to keep that updated as best as I can. Um, you can go on our website, hccptaptsa.org and go to the calendar. You can go to the bottom and you can subscribe to it. That way, all of the events, all the things that we're doing will be on the calendar and they'll auto feed right into your calendar. So you'll be like, oh, look, there's a Facebook Live and it's all about general meetings 101. Yay, I wanna go do that. Founders Day, 
but all the links are there too. So you click on it, the links are there. You can, hopefully that's easier for you. I know we, we try to put it in a few spaces so that everybody gets it. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Frank. We have a YouTube channel, did you know that? I did. And we do uh, We do try to put our video, our Facebook live videos, or if we do um, any kind of programming, we try to put some those up there. Um, and if you're not seeing what you want to see, let us know, because we will make it happen. When I say we, I mean it. Happen. All right, and so uh, great. Uh, yes, definitely the calendar. Subscribe to the calendar. You'll see everything that's coming up. Amy Maria works really hard on putting that together. Founders Day general meeting. When's the general meeting? No, when is it? We have a lot of trainings coming up. <laughs> yeah, we got. Let you know what. Let's Janelle, look at the calendar. Good, good point. Let's <laughs> let's go by date. So next Tuesday we have what? We have the South County training. And emails should have gone out today. If you live in the South County, like Ruskin, Apollo Beach area, um, Riverview, there's going to be a, a joint training for you on Tuesday night. And we'll have a president, secretary, treasurer, and general knowledge on there. I'm looking to do some breakout sessions. It's a great chance to intermingle with some of your local schools too, bounce things off each other. Um, if you didn't get the email, chances are your known returning officers are not in the system. So if you want to check, go ahead and uh, you can email me and I can make sure if you guys have entered your new and returning officers because there's a lot of valuable information coming out. Excellent. And what if I live in West Tampa? Can I attend this anyway? You okay. could, but we're still going to do a West Tampa area training. Okay. All right, but everyone's invited. Yes, yes. Okay, we're not going to kick them out. No, no. Not this we're time. all in, all inclusive. It, there's a there's a word inclusive right in, behind us. Yeah. Well, it's all children are our children. All all regions are our regions. Is that we're doing? That's it. Yeah. That's exactly right. how it works. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the training on that, and then Saturday, February twenty third, uh, Florida PTA is doing something. What are they doing, Amy Marie? On January twenty third. January 23rd. January 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> they're, doing a, they're doing a leadership summit. So you can get, you can inter, intermingle with the whole state and find out what they're doing and network and get some new ideas and support. Um, but those are always really good opportunities to see what other leaders are doing out in the trenches. So, and there's a lot of great yeah. classes on those. There's a lot yeah. of uh, really yeah. different types of classes that um kind of impact different areas mm -hmm. so and that and that how much does that cost it's free it's free 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 99 i believe it's uh, nine, nine to noon on that on that saturday nine to nice. noon we'll have a lunch b-u-y-o lunch <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so um so that'll be fun that was the, the last one was really a, a good time and this one should be fun uh, and then, like you said, the YouTube channel. Anything else we need to let our audience know that's coming up? That's February 27th. Wait, what about the Reflections <gasps> Gallery? We have so much stuff going on. We are the <laughs> coolest people on the planet. Ever. All right, tell us about the Reflections. because Reflections is so cool. So I, of course, got to help Lisa Marie, the mastermind, put it all together. Um, and Darlene and her family as well, our awards chair. We all got to come out when the mall was closed. So it was really fun, but um, and we got to preview all the artwork, but it's all the visual arts entries and all the photography entries from the entire county. So um, at West Shore Plaza. At West Shore Plaza. And it is until the 20th. So get on out there because it's amazing. Um, I think I'm going to go Saturday. I'm going to go Saturday and check it out. Yeah. I mean, it's very, um, it's, some of it is just so, it, it's a reflection of the times that we're in. So it's, it's really good um, artwork. I'm sure all of the poetry and all the language art stuff was really good as well, but I, we don't display that unfortunately. So, um, but go check it out. And then uh, reflections uh, coordinator should plan hopefully to pick it up on the 20th in the evening. So I, we've been sh shouting that out a lot. So hopefully they know that otherwise we'll get it to you eventually maybe at winter training what which is when <laughs> and it's in february but we're not there yet <laughs> so february 27th we will have our general meeting 
and we're going to have, uh, I believe we're going to have classes on awards. Awards, awards. competitions, legislative yeah. priorities, advocacy, things like that. So. Advocacy, advocacy and legislation will be a class or Alicia will be teaching awards with Darlene. Mm -hmm. We will actually be doing, so this is for all of our local PTA units. Please, our president, you're going to have to also get two other people along with you. We need you to come out uh, and I'll tell you in a minute specifically how it's going to work. We need to set up our nominating committee for Hillsborough County Council PTA. The way we do that is asking you to be part of that nominating committee. We need five people, uh, is, including two alternates. So we'll be counting on uh, asking uh, all of our local units to step up and be part of that. That's a great opportunity uh, to, um, to find out what your next board's going to look like. And it's so, actually going to be in person, not via Zoom. Actually, it'll be both. It's, it's going to be both. both. It'll be virtual and in person, correct. Uh, our, our amazing um, uh, leadership, VP of leadership, want to do a hybrid. And uh, I think it's going to be great because I know some of us are just needing to get out a little bit and we will social distance mm -hmm. that will be at the isc building on 40th uh street just by hills or uh, martin luther king and 40th mm -hmm. uh, there's, and i i dropped it in the chat the link to register so whether you are a president or are not anybody can come any pta person any non-pta if you are interested in learning more about pta and you have questions please sign up come but presidents please Register your two delegates. You get a vote and two delegates. So that's count them three. So um, please. This is a great opportunity to bring someone new in too. If you know if you know someone that's being active in these times or coming to you with ideas, have them come with you, even if they might not be a PTA member, because we're going to be talking about nominations. And this person might be a great person to join your board next year and they'll have information to be able to make a decision if they're willing to step forward. And you guys brought up an interesting point. We're gonna uh, hit on this in just a couple minutes when we start in our actual program, and that is general meetings. General meetings are open to anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes for your local units, as well as our Hillsborough County Council. Anyone can attend those uh, meetings, uh, but you're gonna find out uh, a little bit of what procedures and caveats that they have as far as what they can and cannot do. But don't ever not allow somebody into your general meeting because they're not a member of your school or your unit. Uh, everyone is always allowed and we like voices. It's uh, okay, Melissa, it's okay. Double registration is better than no registration. <laughs> <laughs> so I am gonna go, if we're, um, if we're ready to move forward and um, uh, we're gonna move forward. Oh, before we do that, just so, Got everyone knows who you are. I know they can see your names, but Janelle, let them know what you do. Uh, my name's Janelle Smith. I am the VP of Areas for Hillsborough County PTA and also president up at Buchanan Middle School. Um, as the VP of Areas, it's kind of my job behind the scenes to make sure everyone's in compliance to help out with bylaws, any meetings you have, making sure that you have your audits and um, any other compliance issues you may have that you need help with. Uh, at any time, feel free to call me, text me. Uh, most people that have know that I'm always on the other line. And we have seven great regions. If you, this is something that we have five people working in regions, we have two open, two open. So it's different people working um, like Ellen Lyon, she was secretary last year and now she's the South region uh, rep and she has about 20 schools that she corresponds with. We have Melissa Fields. We have um, who else do we have? Tiana Lewis. Tiana yeah. Lewis down South County. She'll, she'll possibly with us on Tuesday. Yeah. We have Tammy, uh, Gustafson. Tammy Gustafson and, and Brandon. So we have, and then uh, Regina, who is also our um, membership. membership chair. She's been very active in the central area. So if, it, yeah. if you're interested in and you like the behind the scenes and like to do um, things to get people in compliance and help one-on-one -on -one and not in crowds, it's a great job. So let me know if you're interested. If you want to help out more, uh, we can get you in touch with the right people and assign you a couple schools to help out. Yeah. If you'd like to do audits, give us a call. Well, Did she fun. just say, I'll get you in touch with my people? Is that what she said? Your people call my people. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, and uh, Amy Marie, 
you're famous, uh, but go ahead and let me know what you do. <laughs> I'm the VP of Council Operations. Um, I, I do all of this. You're the Oracle. Just kind of do all this. I try to <laughs> bring in talent. That's I'm a talent organizer. Um, I do the website. I do the social media. I do whatever anybody wants me to do. I help with awards. I help with reflections. I help um, anything anybody needs. That's pretty much where I fall in line. Military chair, she has a group and she posted the link here in the comments. So if you are a military affected, like you're a spouse or, you know, a parent, a, you're out of school with a high military population, you just want to learn more. She's got a group um, on Facebook and our military engagement chair is so incredibly um, phenomenal. She has so much knowledge to share. So if you are new to the area um, because you've just gotten here and you need resources, uh, this lady's got a volumes of it and she can help you out her name and is very excited about the national champions jennifer sutherland hmm? the national uh, champions alabama won oh yes college she's, football. she's <laughs> into the football thing too so if you like that that's cool too it took me a minute sorry <laughs> <laughs> all right moving right along here moving we're right along some, we're gonna so what we're gonna talk about tonight is general meetings uh we're gonna hit just on the uh, highlights of what needs to be in your general meeting. And then we're really going to focus on nominating committee. This is a, a, an area that not many of us think about. I know as uh, PTA presidents, we, we kind of forget about it. It is part of your bylaws and doing it will make elections a lot more easier. So I'm going to go ahead and share my page. Uh, hopefully it works. Uh, let's see, slideshow from the beginning. And can everybody see that? All right, so, oh, why is it going, go back the other way? I think because you're playing it. Well, I'm trying to move you guys here on my screen. You guys are bothering me. All right, so, there we go. All right, so, general meetings, and ladies, you guys jump in at any point, and uh, at anything here. So, general meetings, real quick, as you see them on the screen, you must have at least three of them. There's a part per your bylaws, if you looked at your bylaws, and for those of you who are going, what's a bylaw? This is a bylaw. Call us. <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> Call. You can't see it because because uh, Amy Marie has me on this thing. I can't see it. Anyway, it says by it says Florida, uh, or it says bylaws on there. So look in your bylaws and check out where uh, and how many meetings you're supposed to have. Typically, it's three. Um, Janelle, how many people you have to have at these uh, general meetings? Have to have at least ten. All right, 10, and they have to be paid members. So we wanna make sure we have at least 10 people there. Now, can you have a meeting without 10 people? You can, you can have a meeting, but you can't, have, you can't vote. You have to have a quorum to vote on anything that is on the agenda. And we'll go over what needs to be on, not what needs to be voted What's on by quorum? the quorum. Quor quorum is uh, 10 people or more, it depends again on your bylaws. If you go to floridapta.org and, and search for your bylaws, search bylaws, you can see the template. If you have not redone your bylaws since this summer, it's a need, good time. It's a it's good, time good time to, to do, do it, it because they've updated it to allow, mm -hmm. before all three had to be in person. Now they've updated the verbiage to allow you to do two virtual and one has to be in person. So if you have your bylaws that are already approved, you can just transfer the information from your bylaws onto the new form and you do not have to vote on it at your general meeting. Very good. So, uh, so we have to have your, you got to have your 10 or more people to vote on anything. Um, must have at least three meetings. One must be in person. And we are gonna try to ha have that done for us here in February, when we do a hybrid, we'll have an in-person and virtual. So a couple of things that have to be done at a general meeting. Um, elections have to be done at a general meeting, cannot be done at a board meeting. Budgets must be approved at, by your general membership. Nominating committee, which we're going to get to in a few minutes, uh, must be done at your general meeting. Uh, bank signers. I'm glad Janelle told me about this at the last second because I forgot. Bank signers must be done at your general meeting. 
Um, so those are the things that have to be done, not at a board meeting, but at one of your at least three general meetings. Um, Amy, you want to jump in on the next one? Sure. Um, so uh, the general meeting is open to everyone, all members, all persons, um, and but only members may vote or speak. So we do that by giving our membership chair or a person appointed a membership. And we usually do wristbands or cards if we're in person, but when you're on a virtual, obviously you have to have somebody um, with a list who's checking to make sure everybody who's actually voting is a member and moving the people out into another room, a waiting area while their voting happens because they can't actually even be in there when the voting's happening. So, um, and if you're confused about how to do that, oh, lovely Janelle knows how very well. <laughs> I guess she's done it. I don't know. Okay. I do. Valerie does. I'm only kidding. We do. The fun <laughs> okay. abilities. We're happy to show you how to do it. It's super duper easy, but, um, you know. Something I forgot to put on here, so I'll take the wrap for it, is <laughs> all of this information, not all of it, but a lot of this important information is in Article 8 uh, of your bylaws. So, so you don't have to go looking through all your bylaws. If you look for Article 8 general membership meetings, a lot of this information will be in there. Janelle, you want to take the next one since this is one that you remembered? Uh, so the notification of the, the oh, I'm sorry, the general meeting is open to all persons. So. I just read that. So, but as far as, oh, we'll do the notifications next. Notifications of the meeting should be based on the days in your bylaws. So there's only a certain amount of fields in your bylaws that can be edited. And this is one of them. So your president, secretary should each have printed sets of bylaws in their binder and with them at all time, because it's going to be a reference. Usually it's three to five days that you give notice to the whole uh, PTA pop general um, membership, but also to your whole school. So jumping to the next one, your general meeting is opened, as they said, to all people. So your notification, have your principal set it out, or if you have someone that is at the school that's able to send out um, text, or they can post it on their Facebook or any sort of social media, the whole, everyone is allowed to attend your general meetings. Awesome, Amy. General meeting minutes must be approved only at general meeting only. So the general meeting minutes from our last general meeting, which would have been the first, because this will be our second, right? Those will be the minutes that you're gonna bring to this meeting, not the, the board meeting minutes from last month or anything like that. So those are the meeting minutes that your secretary will present. Excellent. Uh, administration should have time to speak. Uh, you always want to have administration principal AP speak at all your minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, all your meetings, but uh, certainly your general membership meeting. Uh, give him or her a chance to speak in front of the whole school or as many people as you can get. Uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, he or she to uh, talk about what the school's going through, some of the issues, some of the uh, victories, everything that's going on. And uh, it's, it's, hopefully a chance for a lot more people to want to attend your meeting so they can uh, meet or see the principal. Amy? Um, administer oh, we encourage having a program as part of a meeting. Um, I'm having my general meeting this month for Robinson High School. I'm the president there and we're having a speaker from Spark come in and talk about how to be an askable adult. It's like a 30 minute short presentation, it's free. Um, just a way to give a little bit more value for our parents, maybe encourage them to come. Um, but it's just an, a great way to actually have a little, a little program in there and it's great information. So if you want any ideas on what you would like to do, could do, shoot me an email, vpoperations at hccptapta.org and I'll send you some. Or you could go to the YouTube channel and look at the past presentation you guys did on programming during that, the pandemic. That, that too, yes. Lots, nice. of, lots of good ideas to do virtually. Janelle, you want to take the next one? All right. Meetings can be done in person or virtually at the same time. So like above, it says you have to have three general meetings, one of which, which has to be in person. But you can also do it a hybrid. If you have people that 
cannot come to the meeting, you can have them on a Zoom call while the others meet in person. But every anybody on a Zoom call needs to have their actual name. So if you see the three of us, we have our names on here. You can't have your kid's name or nickname because everyone needs to be documented when you're doing a meeting. Very good. And treasurer's report must be given at general meetings. Uh, treasurer reports must be always given at every meeting. Um, but uh, in this case, because we are talking about general meetings, make sure that that treasurer report is given. You typically want to either hand out paperwork in the past we have or put it on a screen or if you're doing it virtually, put it on the uh, share it, but allow your membership to see and explain any changes that you have uh, in that uh, from month to month. So uh, not just telling them that information, but letting them see it somehow is, is important. And sometimes it can uh, answer a lot of questions for your membership. And we're going to get into that a little bit more too, because that does come uh, along as far as uh, giving that information. So answering a couple of questions here, and we're going to move on to our nominating committee. Uh, information. And please, if you have any questions, you guys are kind of blowing up the, the chat, which is great. Uh, Melissa, you asked if do we see any possible change on requiring a meeting uh, being in one person? Or Let me try this one more time. Do I see a possible change of requirement of one meeting being in person? Uh, you're asking the wrong person. That call needs to go to <laughs> Jennifer Martinez Billings. Uh, and it will be something if it continues, the pandemic continues, the numbers spike. I'm sure the board of directors, as well as the uh, EC, our, our um, executive council will uh, look at doing something like that, but until they tell us, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, I have, do you see that one question three of who board members only? I mm -hmm. think she's confused. I think she's confused with the three of them. That how you wrote that. It just means three of the general meetings, not three. Yeah, people. Melissa uh, answered that too. Answered but that's a great up. question. Yeah. yeah. So it's not three people. Yeah, it's, it's one must be in person. We're having three meetings. Specific three general meetings. meetings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So sorry, this was done in literally eight minutes. So no, you're good. Good job. <laughs> All right. So again, can, even though we're moving on, if you have any questions, please chat, uh, write them in chat. And we'll do our very best to answer those. Uh, we have um, between Janelle and, and Amy Marie, uh, you've got a, a huge amount of uh, experience being president. So. All right, so nominating committee. Um, we'd all like to have as many people at some of our PTA meetings, uh, but you see we have at least 10, so that's kind of nice. We have a quorum here at this meeting. All right, so reason for a nominating committee. Okay, so let's start with the reasons for it. Why? Uh, they're required in your bylaws. They are required in Article 6, Section 3, if you want to look it up. Um, if you don't believe me, you'll see that uh, you have a nominating committee. Uh, and how it's done. And it's to, and it, I wrote this in, to give all members an opportunity to be aware of positions for elections. By talking about the nominating committees, you also uh, allow yourself and allow your members to hear what positions will be open, who will be run, or uh, what they can run for. And it gives everybody a chance to start considering if they wanna run for any of those positions. Janelle, wanna take the next one? As far as who, it's any paid member of your PTA, except for the president. So the, you're, you should have a list, your secretary should have a list of who are the paid members of your PTA because you're gonna need to establish quorum anyways. Uh, that way you'll know who is eligible for the nominating committee. And you don't have, you can serve year after year when you're on the nominating committee at a local unit. There's no limit as to how many years in a row you do it, but you wanna make sure you're also getting alternates. Because the, if you're running, if you're a person on the nominating committee and you're running for a position, you'll have to recuse yourself right. and your alternate will have to step in. So that is another good reason to have alternates. And you'll get more people to volunteer too when they know they're not hard, fast stuck with it because they, they might not know how their summer or how their schedule looks in the spring. Amy, you want to take the next one? Sure, when? So at least one month prior to election, so it must be done in a general meeting. So we typically do um, our nominations committee in January, February, when we have that first meeting. Um, and we ask for uh, volunteers to step up and um, 
ours bylaws say three or five. Um, so we have to vote on if we want three or if we want five. So that's something we should probably change. But anyway, um, so if it's three, you need four. And if it's five, you need seven. Yep. Six. Yeah. You get two yeah. alternates. So um, you got to do it at a general meeting. So I, and I always suggest, you know, kind of maybe talking about it ahead of time so people aren't surprised. So, and try to find different people to do it because, you know, you want, you want new, new, fresh perspectives. And it's a great way to bring new people in. If they yeah. don't want to be responsible for an elected position, they can come in and just help with the nominating committee. And as they go through it, inevitably you end up suckering one of them in to a uh, elected position. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, so something that's a little, it's been a confusing uh, point and it was earlier in the year and I actually was confused. So I had to go find it out. Now, the, there's a difference between county council nominating and local unit nominating. And county council, you cannot serve back-to-back uh, -back on the nominee committee. Right. Uh, matter of fact, B, section four says, no member shall serve two consecutive years on the nominee committee and no two shall be from the same local PTA, PTSA. But your local unit, you can serve back-to-back. -back. I think you guys said that earlier. And I, and I only say that because it was brought up earlier uh, in the year about that. So, um, all right. And the so bylaws go are different for the local unit than mm -hmm. the county council. So you want to make sure that you are doing your local unit bylaws. As a matter of fact, they're three pages different. They're three pages longer. So, um, all right. So very good. So now the ABCs on how to get it done. Now I said ABCD because there's actually four sections here. So um, let, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just so everybody knows, we didn't practice any of this. So you're Obviously. when you hear I think the right they answer tell. from these, they can tell. Yeah, they can, they can tell. tell. But when you hear the right answer from Janelle and Amy Marie, that's just because that they're just that smart. I mean, they already know this stuff. So we, we didn't have to. Practice. We've already made the mistakes. We already know how to do it wrong. <laughs> So Amy, you want to go ahead and take a... Sure. A? Okay. Yes. So nominating committee. There must be a nominating committee elected composed of three or five members. The number determined by the association at a regular meeting at least one month prior to the election of the officers, which means they need to vote on whether they want three or five. Um, you don't get to decide that for them. Uh, the president shall appoint a chair pro tem who shall call the first meeting. So, and the president can pick one of the people and appoint them and then the committee will elect its own chair once they meet. Um, you can choose three or five members on numbers so there aren't ties. It's suggested to elect alternates as well. Um, definitely select an alternate, at least one for three and two for five, just in case something happens and somebody can't meet up. With the virtual life as it That's is, but I think then they also have to step in if someone's if, nominated. Yeah, so it is highly suggested because many times um, nominations committees are comprised of people like chairs and things like that within your board and they may want to step up into a VP position and they can't be part of the committee that votes that. So um, definitely get um, those, those alternates and they all need to attend the meetings together so they know what's going on. Um, a regular meeting is a general meeting. It must be one month or more before the date of elections. The current president will appoint, and this is all repeated, right? Like I'm well, it's just because above <laughs> it says a regular meeting in the bylaws, it doesn't say general meeting. So just to clarify, a regular just meeting. Just to clarify, in case you don't know the regular and general. Robert's okay. rules, Robert's rules. Robert's rules. <laughs> Uh, so once, and I know you kind of said it, but let's make sure everybody understands this. Uh, once the president uh, uh, appoints a pro tem, a temporary chair position at the first meeting, that committee of three or four or five, I'm sorry, three or five, they will have their own election and, or they can and have their own permanent chair. Well, they will need to vote whether they right. keep the pro tem or they, so they'll have to pro vote a chairperson. They can select another one or, you know, and it's important to note also, whoever is the chair, 
is who's going to be presenting the slate at the next general meeting. So yes. the chair needs to know that they are going to be talking to a group. And if yeah. they don't feel so, comfortable with that, that's probably not the best person to put as the yeah. chair. Exactly. So. Okay. All right. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, let's go to B. Uh, Janelle. The nominating committee shall nominate one person for each office to be filled and report its nominees at the election night, at which time additional nominations may be made from the field. In order to be a nominated person, you must be a member of the PTA. So to know how many people you need to nominate, the, the first thing you should do now that you've been not elected to the nominating committee, you wanna get copy of your bylaws for that PTA and the standing rules because both of those will have all the information that you need as far as when you're talking to people, what their jobs entail because the um, standing rules might have some extra stuff that are not in the bylaws. And you need to at least have the president, secretary, and treasurer. You do not need the have to voting secretary. And then the number of vice presidents will be listed in your uh, bylaws. It could be anywhere from one to, if you're lucky enough, you might have 10. But in the bylaws, it lists one through three for the vice presidents. And it also says what each role is. So the, it might be ways and means, which is mostly your fundraiser, it might be um, programs is one of them. And so when you're talking to your vice presidents, you wanna make sure that they like whatever their title is and what their job is as that vice president. As far as the nominations from the floor, someone could walk into your PTA that day, pay their dues, and ask to be nominated uh, or run from the floor against the nominated people from your PTA. The only people that can actually vote have to be members of your PTA for 30 days in advance. You can either self-nominate or someone else can nominate you also, but you have to, whoever's nominated has to accept the nomination. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and for those of you who are looking for this information uh, on the uh, duties of officers, uh, Janelle was talking about the, the different officers, president, secretary, treasurer, and eight vice presidents. That would be an article seven, duties of officers. So see, it's like an open book test that we're giving you right now. We're giving you all the answers. <laughs> Andrew, if you put in your new and returning officers into Florida PTA, you got your kit of materials. And there's even more detailed information in that kind of materials that you can share with your nominating committee. Very good. And just FYI for, oh, you know what? There was a question that um, Melissa had. Mm -hmm. Can I recruit a nominating committee uh, this month at our general assembly? This is our final general assembly before elections. Absolutely. Uh, winter training is really where you should be doing setting up your nominating committee because that is your typically your last uh, meeting uh, general meeting before your election. So this is the time to do it. Hence, that's why we're doing it tonight. Uh, specifically, uh, we're not that smart to figure that stuff out, but we're smart enough to figure out that most people are having their winter meetings coming up and we want to let you know that, hey, this is the time to do your nominating committees. Uh, so hopefully this information will be helping out. Anything else, ladies, before I move to the next one? The nominating committee needs to be done at least 30 days before your election. So if you, if you don't have your general meeting now, you're postponing it till February or March, remember it has to be 30, that general meeting has to be 30 days before your general meeting with the election. All right, next one, the how. And I know you covered a little bit of this earlier. Um, and let me move the screen a little bit here so I can read this. Actually, just, uh, Amy and Ray, just read it. Okay. <laughs> Only those persons who have consented to serve. Oh, uh, sorry, I told you I'm screwing around with the, the page. If elected, yes. shall be nominated for or elected to such office. You must say yes. You can't just nominate people without asking them. This can be done in person or through a written notice. Persons can't be nominated unless they agree. Um, so always, you know, have the conversation. I have always suggested like interviewing, talking, having lunch, like 
converse, make sure they really understand the position that they're signing up for. So. And now with doing the virtual meetings, mm -hmm. there are some times where we've been on calls and you know you have to drive somewhere and you're not able to be on the meeting. If you send a text to someone that says, yes, you accept the nomination for president or secretary, and that person is able to show that text from you, then we could take that as an acceptance of um, that nominating for that position. Cool. Great, great point. Make sure, uh, Secretary, if you're taking minutes, that you note that, that uh, that person did accept through a text. Um, make sure you see the text and you can validate that it was done. Um, so very good. Awesome. And the last one. Last Have one. you guys ever heard anybody say no when they were nominated? Yes. I think I said no. I <laughs> yes. And, I still, no and I'm still here. I don't know what happened. Wait, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Frank said no. <laughs> I was promised tacos. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I said we're all here Spanish for the tacos. Too. We're all here for the tacos. No, so. no one gets that joke. They don't know that I, I live near Lily's, guys. So you don't live near it. You live on a property of it. I know. I live right behind <laughs> Lily's Tacos. So, so it's all right. The official food of HCCPTA. That's right. It should, you know what? We really need to make them a sponsor at this point. <laughs> all right. Uh, Janelle? I want it. I like it. Am I doing the how? Is that why you said my name? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Members of the NADA nominating committee may be elected to office. And this goes along with making sure that you have alternates. So if you're on the nominating committee and you would like to run as treasurer, you, when they're talking about who they would like to, the nominating committee talks about who they would like to elect at, or put on the nomination slate for treasurer, you should remove yourself from the room so that they don't feel as though that they need to talk a certain way or not nominate other people or take other people into consideration. And then you can come back into the room after they talk about it. An alternate should take your spot at that time. So there's always an odd amount of people talking about it for voting purposes to make sure that it's agreed by the majority. Yeah, you know, one thing, and this is just my opinion only, this is not a bylaw or, or any type of rule, but if you're considering running for one of those offices, really think about being on a nominating committee in the first place. Um, I know some of, uh, some of you are in smaller PTAs and don't have uh, that luxury of having other people, but if you can find different members who may not be on the board at all, really, and I know this was hit earlier, really try to encourage them to be part of the nominating committee because one, it's a great chance for them to, to kind of feel how, how the, the unit works. And two, it's one of those positions where once the elections are started, their job is done. So there's no long-term uh, position for them and they may decide they want to do something in addition to it later on and it gives them a little bit of taste. But going back to what I said, just consider maybe finding other people to be part of the nominating committee besides yourself. Because sometimes it can become a very awkward discussion having you there and then you having to leave the room or leaving the Zoom and coming back. Um, and again, I know that's not the perfect answer. It doesn't help everybody, but it's one of those things where just take an extra second. But at the same time too, when you, it's nice to be in there because you know everyone's personalities and you might need someone with a different type of personality to be on that board. If everybody was like Amy Marie and I, I don't know that we would all get along. I don't know. <laughs> so that's, you need different personalities. Sure. So, so sure. Amy Marie's strength is doing the technology, but you know someone else's strength is this. You might look at who you're gonna be nominating and know that you need to bring in someone that's really good at communications or uh, because your slate might not be strong that way. And that will give you so a little bit of flexibility. We we haven't really touched. Are we talk? Are we touching on recruiting at all next? Is that next? We can. We can. We're gonna we're gonna kind of open it up and talk about some uh, FAQs, things like that. So yeah, hold on to that. That's a great okay. point. Cool. Um, so are we kind of done are with this? I, I didn't, I'm sorry. This one, yes. Okay. So um, let's hit on a couple of questions too. There's some good um, questions go down through. here. Do you see yeah, them? Erica, I'm going to go from bottom to top. I know I saw some other ones from earlier. Erica, 
Hamlin, who, who's a superstar already. Uh, why do we have to do this every year? Is there any way to change the length of time to two years or have the option to commit to either one or two years? Well, in your bylaws, uh, in Article 6, Section D, uh, I'm sorry, Section 2, Number D, letter D, number D. <laughs> a person shall not be eligible to serve more than two consecutive terms in the same office. But just above that in C, it says, um, uh, with the exception of treasurer, officers shall assume their official duties following the end of the school year and shall serve for a term of one year or until their successors are elected. So we have one year terms up to two consecutive years. So the so, reason we have one year terms I think that's what she's asking. Why do we have to oh, do it every year? Because the board, the membership changes. Um, Erica, if the membership was the same for two years, then that would be fine. They could vote for two year, but for a two year term. But because your membership ends once a year and starts over, it's a totally new membership and it's, it, they have to vote for their board. So they can potentially vote for a different board every year because it's different people voting. And you, and you get complacent in two, I know some years you get your first year is a learning year. That's why it allows for the second year. Um, but if you're there two straight years, it can get complacent and, and you might want to change or someone moves into your school. Uh, so it allows you to have more flexibility than having to ask someone to leave also. So yeah. that's true. <laughs> and going a lot at something that I forgot to add, um, the difference between local units and county unit, uh, county councils and stuff. Um, as a local unit, you're not allowed to have a president elect or a co-officer. The only people that you can have is who's in your bylaws and a president elect is not recognized as an officer on your elected PTA. Yeah, very, very good. Thank you for mentioning that. That's a good point because I know when you look at the VPs, you kind of try to figure out uh, a lot of the ones that we see are A to the president, which is fine. We do, uh, the Florida PTA does recognize that. Um, and as you notice, Florida PTA does do two year terms for themselves. They have different bylaws than we have. So, Erica, if that's kind of where you're uh, going through on that, that's why they just simply have different bylaws, just like we have different bylaws from local PTAs. So, um, I know those, uh, Alexandra, yes, we will share this. Uh, Amy Marie is always good about uh, sharing this information out. Give her a couple days to breathe and get some tacos and she'll be good. <laughs> On Facebook, YouTube. Yes, I, all of it, yep. wherever you want it. I'll put it on our website. I'll put it on, I'll email it to you if you drop your, if you PM me your email, don't, don't post it in the chat. Okay. And the other question that uh, Erica had was, our board has determined that VP of Ways and Means needs two people to do it. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, how should I title those roles in the bylaws? We used to do, um, so we did VP of Ways and Means at Walker, remember? And then we had chairs underneath our Ways right. and Means. It was large fundraisers, small fundraisers, um, business sponsors. Um, Holiday shop. It, and it was broken down. And then in our standing rules, we, we just, we spelled it out like large fundraisers means the walkathon, the blah, 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 and the blah, blah, blah. The small fundraisers are jeans day. Yep. Cause I, you could have I, seven chairs under the ways yeah. and means. Yeah. And so those, and then that those people supported, they just reported to the ways and means and the ways and means person was the one that, um, had, you know, was at the meetings and all that fun stuff, so. And at Lutz, they're lucky because they do have a lot of people, but the more vice presidents you add and the more position, the more elected positions you have, you're adding to your quorum. Mm -hmm. So if you have four people, you have the president, tre treasurer and secretary, and then one VP, you only need three out of the four there. But if you have four vice presidents, your president and treasurer and secretary, of that seven, now you have to have four, you have to have more people, like you have to have a majority to vote on anything. So the more people you add, the more people you have to have at every meeting. Yeah. And I will say Walker Middle Magnets standing rules are 
very they were really well written so um, i'm sure they'd be willing to share them if anybody would want them but and i know lowry has some really good standing rules some schools don't have standing rules i don't have standing rules at my at my ptsa well so. and some of these are the new k-8s that yeah. will need the middle school part of it and, and yeah. have different things going on yeah, i'm sure uh, the president over there would be willing to share them so are you throwing heather campa bianco i am under the bus, her under the bus. <laughs> call her up <laughs> I probably still have a copy. I was going to say, who wrote them? <laughs> I think PJ. <laughs> oh, gosh. They're probably Aaron. Uh, they're yeah, really they're, good. They're really yeah. good. They're really All right. Good. So I, I posted on here, and uh, we'll figure out, we'll put this in the chat. This is a, um, if you click onto this, I don't know if you can click on it here, but if you oh. just uh, go to this, this will be, I think it's three or four pages, and it really gives you a good explanation of oh, the I'll committee duty and uh what you should bring to each meeting, uh, what happens in certain situations. And uh, it's a really good cheat sheet for how to do your nominating committees once the nominating committee has been uh, put together. I, so. I just gave them that. Like I just made them a little binder and handed it to my nominating committee and said, here you yep. go. And also the FloridaPTA.org nominations yeah. and elections, they yeah. actually have a script so if you're doing, if you're oh, going nice. to be um, doing the presentation of it, it tells you nominating committee chair says this, president says this, secretary, it, um, if you're someone that likes to have some sort of, go I used and it. get the script. I used it. I, I used, used it, it every time. Yep. I, it's so much easier. Like, why would I even, I could screw everything up or I could do it the right way. Hello. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here. And again, we're going to, you guys have been amazing as far as asking questions. Uh, use the resources that we put on here. But uh, obviously, there's, there's a lot more to that. Um, so let's open it up to any more questions that, that everyone has. Uh, and Janelle and Amy Marie, is there anything we should cover in general meetings and nominating committees? Well, there's, there's one thing that I was thinking of is the, um, that's come up as to what happens if after you have your election, one of your elected officers leaves, what is the next flow for that? And if your president, if your president ends up leaving, your first VP bumps into that position as your, the president elect is not an option because they're not recognized by Florida PTA. So first VP will pop, bump into that. And then you can put any of your elected officers into the, the alternate positions. So say you need a treasurer or a secretary, you could put one of your elected VPs into those positions until your next general meeting. And you can do the election of someone else to replace them. Yes. Um, what um, Janelle's talking about, it will be found in article six, section four. Vacancies, a vacancy occurring office of president shall be filled for the remainder of the unexpired term by the VP, first VP, and you go down. So if the first VP doesn't want that, uh, that job, it goes to the second VP. <laughs> a vacancy occurring in any other office shall be filled for the unexpired term by a person elected by the majority vote of the executive board on which they sh shall serve. Notice of such elections have been given. Now, this was a conversation that Janelle and I had earlier. If an officer has already been elected, then that means they have already been elected by the general membership. So that officer can move to a different position in, as another officer. It does not have, he or she does not have to go to a general membership meeting again. But if that person was not an officer and you're bringing them, they were a chair position or a, a member and you want to make them an officer, then you will have to take them to, they will have to be elected at a general membership meeting of 10 or more people. And you can have more than three general meetings. No yes. one says you, do, you have to have It just has to be a minimum. It so just you can has have... to be a minimum. So if for some reason something comes up and, you know, I, say I'm my husband, he was in the military. Say we got sent somewhere else and I had to leave. Like, you know, things happen. So as things happen, and if you are unsure, you, you know, you can always reach out to Janelle, Frank, me, whoever um, on the board, we all pretty much know the same thing. And we can attend your general meetings. If you, if you yeah. have any problems or it, like it could be personality problems within yours, or you have a conflict with administration that you just want us to kind of be there, or 
you just are doing a great job and you want us to see and so we can spread it to other PTAs. Feel free to invite us. Frank and I are on, I don't know, three or four a week at least. Yeah, if you have a problem with uh, or some tension with your uh, administration or another member, you will not be the first school no. and you definitely won't be the last school. So don't worry. It's, it's the dynamics of personalities and, um, and, and we are there. Sometimes we just sit there and um, encourage you guys and sometimes we'll step in if we have to, but absolutely call one of us. You have an amazing board uh, uh, on Hillsborough County with a ton of presidents. And, and everyone else has a ton of experience. Any one of them would be more than happy to jump on that meeting with you. Definitely. What else, ladies? Anything else? Nominations for us? Um, while we have- Is there a good way for people's group? attention? That I, a couple of things I wanna remind you. Right now, we only have about 118 PTAs that have handed in new and returning officers. Last year we had 171. So I know it's been different this year with uh, COVID. If you have had elections and you're wondering if, it, you, if you're not receiving anything from Florida PTA or us, or if you're just wondering in general, if you have submitted that, uh, email us and we can let you know. Also, there's a lot of outstanding audits and taxes that haven't been done. We have a current list of who has done that also. So you might think you've done them, but you haven't sent them into state. And uh, we know a few people ourselves who they've done them, but they didn't hand them in. So who would do that? <laughs> Janelle knows who you are too. She has all your information. <laughs> she does. And, and it's simple because you get it done and, and it's just that one step. So let yeah. us know. And just to forward it an email. Thing. So it's not, it's not like, and it's not that big of a deal if you haven't nope. done it, you just have to yep. do it. So. And you're not Whatever. the only one. So don't, don't be shy. Yeah. Yes, yes. We're, we are giving a lot of grace to our local units because our Florida PTA is giving us a lot of grace as well. Um, we understand what's going on and we just want you to get it, get it done. And as Janelle said earlier, um, if you haven't done your elections and you want us to come be part of it or, or run them or just sit there, just let us know. We'll, we'll be there. We are here uh, for that. We're here for trainings, which um, again, we're having plenty of trainings coming up. Now, one thing we didn't talk about, and I want to make sure we, I at least um, address it for everyone, we didn't get into elections themselves. And again, we had talked about this earlier. I, I felt, so you guys can yell at me, I felt like if we gave you a bunch of information on elections, and there is a ton of information on how to do an election, if it's contested, how to get tellers, a, a lot of stuff that's not always in your bylaws, we're going to do that probably in March as it gets closer to the election time. Tonight, we really want to hit on how to get to that point. So don't feel like uh, we're not uh, remembering the elections themselves. We just feel like that's two months away. Uh, and, and many of our elections are going to be in April, May. It's just a lot of stuff to remember. Uh, so, but we will hit on that. Um, Erica's asking, we only have three general meetings. Is it okay to hold elections at the final one of the year and intro new board, board at the same time? It's typically how we do it. Yes. 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 It's okay. Actually, there's a, there's a, yeah, yeah, there's a specific answer to that. It's actually, Erica, it's actually in your bylaws when you would have that meeting, usually in April or May. And you can change that, but typically uh, it is sitting there. You could do April, May, or you could do April slash May. If you want to keep it, keep it flexible, you can add multiple um, months in there, but there's two spots that you put the month where your final general meeting is held. So yeah, I would April. check your check your bylaws and see which month that says. Mine says April slash May, thankfully. So um, yeah. at last year, I know we I think we bumped right up into May. So um, check your bylaws and see what it says. But the last meeting of the year is when you do that, and then I think the treasurer is the only one that has to stick around until the fiscal every, year is done and the everything's audience. done and said and all that. So Erica, because you're uh, make your life a little bit easier. Article six, section one. Uh, I'm sorry, section two. Uh, B is in boy. It, it'll have your date on when you can do your when you're going to do your elections. So, so check on that. Um, and if you don't like the date, <laughs> you can always change that with the vote. So true. So what do you do when you don't have enough people interested to do an election? Can we just automatically give them the position? 
automatically. You, you when you say auto, I, I'm not sure if what right. you mean by automatically given the position. And I'm not having an election. Need, you need to have an election. You, you need to, even if the, the same officers are going to be the same exact board for the next year, you need to have them elected and have those that documented in your general meeting notes. If you have seven positions open, but you can only fill president, secretary, and treasurer, that's fine also. If you have someone that is will has served two years and you can't find someone to take their position, they can serve in the interim after two years and but you have to actively look for someone to take that position and it hopefully in your first general meeting of the following year you can elect a new person into that position with incoming parents you, um janelle you hit on a very good point i want to make sure um it's we go a step further so if you have seven people who are officers, you have your president, secretary, treasurer, and you have four VPs. And all you're able to do is fill in those president, secretary, and treasurer. Are you okay? Yep. No, you're not, you're not because your bylaws have you seven. So you need to have at least four people for quorum. Oh, oh, wow. She went, she went with the math yeah. part. Very good. Okay. Yes, you are right. But you can, I am you can wrong, adjust right. your bylaws in yeah. that meeting. If you if you don't think you can get four, if your your school's changing, dynamics change, and if you think you're not going to be able to fill those four, maybe you do two, and then have chair positions that you can. But change your bylaws with Florida PTA as far as how many positions you're going to fill. Okay, let me ask the question differently because you you did catch me on that. That was good. So if you only have one VP. And you have, uh, you, but you can only fill the president, secretary, and treasurer. Do you have to fill that VP position in order to move forward? No, you do not. Okay. That can be I left open. That. If you're not able, if you have your elections and you can't find anybody to fill that VP position, that is okay. Yeah. Uh, it's in your bylaws and you can always fill it at a later time. But as long as you have your president, secretary, treasurer, you are in compliance. But Janelle was really good because. I actually had seven people on mine and that would, you would not have to have, you would not have quorum at your meetings by only having three. So very nice. For a bylaw change, does the board approve the bylaws before the general meeting? You can, you can work on your bylaws and you can put them in there, but you have to review them with your general um, membership and your general membership has to, it's going to be once they um, have a motion to accept them, you're going to open it for discussion and they can actually change the, any items they want to, but they, in the end, have to vote and approve those bylaws. And the date of when your bylaws are actually- the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So, and the bylaws are good based on the date they're stamped from Florida PTA, not the date that you put, that you put on when you sign them. How many years is that? Three. Oh, okay. Woohoo! Yeah, look at that. All right, so Knowledge. we've hit over an hour. Wow. Wow, this so, is a lot of information. Yeah. I, I wanted so, to talk a little bit about recruiting. Go ahead. We should talk about like how do you recruit people? How do you find people? Because that's the job of the nominations committee, right? Like that's their whole purpose is to find people to fill leadership right. positions. So obviously you're gonna send out a call for nominations via um, your member hub and social media and through the school and hopefully your incoming parents, they all are, you know, you already know who those people are gonna be. So um, your administration can put the call out for you as well. So hopefully catch some um, new parents that might be interested, but are there other ways? Yeah, ask your current officers because any good officer should be looking for their replacement day one when they start. And you, know it. you might have one or two years in there, but you're already thinking of who is going to be taking your place and possibly training them. So if, if you're on the nominating committee, ask all of your officers if they're willing to return first off, if they have another year of service. And then also if they know of anyone that's been active because you might not be on campus all the time and see what other people may be doing. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's about the ask. Some yes. people just need to be asked, hey, yep. would you like to step up and be the secretary at our meetings? Like, it's not. Volatile. 
You're not voluntold. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes it's asked. about the ask, but I would say if you're a, um, you're an elementary PTA, obviously you're going to hopefully be able to go to all of the incoming parent nights that are coming up or ask your administration to at least share your information with all of your incoming kindergarten families. Um, because you want, you want new perspectives. You want, because especially in a, uh, elementary school you're there for what five years six years so it, it gets sometimes families are there a very long time and we get in a rut of doing the same thing and sometimes that fresh perspective can turn things um, around and make it even better um, middle school once you get into middle school obviously we're going to want to hit all those fifth grade families coming in and reach out to your other local so you know all the schools coming into your school especially if you're a local school. If you're a magnet, it's a little harder. Um, usually work with that fifth grade, uh, what is it, the sixth grade coordinator who coordinates with the fifth grade people all over. So there's usually one person on campus that, that sends out information. Find out who that person is and get your nomination, a call for nominations out to all those fifth grade families coming to your sixth grade. Um, but reach out to the local unit you know, PTAs. Like call Deer Park if you're, Farnell, or if you are, what am I, Monroe is <laughs> right down the street and I'm a high school, I'm, you know, I'm going to go maybe reach out to them and say, hey, do you have any PTA leaders coming to my school next year? Right? You know? Or invite them to your general meeting. Invite them to your general meeting. Invite all these people. Invite them um, to your events. Uh, we do try to promote all of the events of our local schools that are going on. I know we have some middle schools and some elementary schools and when I see they're having a a night at you know a, a what a spirit night at PDQ I always try to share that on our pages too it should really get them that uh, exposure and build that community for them because those kids in that school are going to be going to my school someday I, mean, I won't be there but you know let's build goodwill for everybody so um, ask your military parents mm -hmm. Jen is I, I, will I will tell you as a military uh, parent, you know, I, I was a uh, military spouse for 21 years. The first thing I did was join a PTA because I knew that that would connect me to everything that was going on in the school and in the community. So it was always my first thing. Um, so tap into that, you know, there are always military leaders on within each school. Um, obviously we know we have a military chair as well. So you can always reach out to us and we can give you some ideas too. So yes, kinder parents, they show up at the meetings. Boo-hoo breakfasts. Boo-hoo breakfasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the application. Before you can get your blueberry muffin, you must fill this out. Fill this out. You know, and those are the most excited parents. And honestly, sometimes they have some really great ideas. So. Mm -hmm. Um, tap into that because um, we need to replace ourselves. We need to leave a legacy. We need to make sure that what we're doing is building a foundation and growing, not dying when we leave. So um, that is my spiel. I'm done. All right. Well, anything else? I know my, I could smell my dinner ready. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not tacos. I can smell tacos. <laughs> uh, whatever. All right. Um, I hope you, everyone has is, is, uh, gotten some out of this tonight. Um, that's our purpose here is to share this information, uh, to, to uh, empower every one of you, to give you more uh, abilities and, and understand how to PTA works. It sometimes doesn't make sense. Bylaws don't always uh, make sense to us, but we're, we're here to help you out as much as we can. And of course, we're learning with you. So yeah, I want to thank Janelle well. Smith, who again is our VP of Areas and Regions, yep. uh, who is always willing and able to take a phone call and email and help you out and be there and talk to you and talk to you and give you information. And Amy awesome. Marie, who's uh, an amazing advocate at Robinson, is, is she's been one for many many years, and uh, is the reason why Zoom works for us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Um, and all that stuff that you see every single day on Hillsborough County Council PTA pages, uh, you can either uh, clap for her or you can point your finger at her. You can boo or yeah. clap. Or bomb in your Facebook page. And if Let's you're not seeing something represented or if you share, 
share with me, please. I need more content all the time. So if you see something great happening or you have something you'd like to share with the community, please shoot it to me, send it out. I'd love to share it with you. I, I wanted to mention one thing about general meeting since it is our January yeah. general meeting. It's our winter or January and February. So it's our winter, so it's mid-year, right? Um, and it's something I know we're doing at our PTA is we're, ha we're doing our budget amendments. So oh, we, the first we really need to review that just a, just a little bit. Just yes. I, I'm doing it because I, I wrote a grant and we got a grant. Yay. So well, also especially this year, because we all budget in the beginning of the year isn't looking. This yeah. Time, so probably. the budget, this is a time when you're reviewing the budget and you're looking at what you've made you know, on your fundraisers maybe and what you wanting to do as far as programs and what your intentions are moving Adjust forward. Adjust your expenses. You may have taken in less so you can't do, do so. as much. Um, yeah. With, yeah. So and that yes. all has to be approved by your general. Yeah. So if man, maybe you got a grant. I, you know, I know there are a few schools who um, got grants this year here in Hillsborough County and, and all over Florida, but um, we got one, so but we can't spend the money until we have a budget line. So, um, so those are things that you got to do at your general meeting, and um, I just want to make sure we touched that. But you definitely that. review that budget and look at it. If you've gone over in one spot, you know you're obviously going to have to make some adjustments. So, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to Janelle. She loves she loves spreadsheets and budgets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No. So, so, so South County training on yeah. January 19th. Yes. Next Tuesday night. Absolutely. All of this is on Hillsborough County Council PTA page. Uh, February 27th, mark your calendars nine to one. We are uh, hopefully going to have Superintendent Addison Davis as our speaker as well. That's exciting. At that. And um, we want everyone to be there. We need you guys out uh, to vote as well. So with that, anything else, ladies? Frank, I want to thank you for everything you do for all of the kids at council and local units. And there's a lot of things that people don't see. And I hope they appreciate you doing this on top of regular job and the other volunteer opportunities you have. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen my job all week, but you know what? I appreciate that. Those are very kind words. I really do. But all of you and our whole group is an amazing group of superstars, every one of them. And uh, I am so thrilled to have each one of them on this they're always working on little things from legislation advocacy member hub um uh, amy with her uh putting stuff up janelle talking to uh people darlene with awards which is coming up soon uh, yes next yay. week next i know week we're gonna talk all about awards and we're gonna tell you how to apply because i just want to let you know there is some amazing stuff happening in this county and i certainly hope we get a lot of good applications because some of the stuff that our, our schools have done or our PTAs have done to just creative comfort zones, like yep. overcome all these crazy rules. I want to hear, I want to hear these stories. Um, I want to hear all the great things you've done. So please, please be ready to apply for some of those awards. So. All right. I'm going to say good night. Cause I can hear my wife yelling right now. I mean, um, but Jenny did have a question. What percentage of people have to approve for amendments in general meetings? That's two thirds, two thirds must approve for an amendment. So hopefully I answered that. If you have any questions that come up after we get off, email them to us. We'll be more than happy to answer them or make up the answers if we have to. We don't make up the answers. No. All right. All right. Good night, Thank ladies. You Thank you all. Thank you both for coming on here and sharing your expertise with our groups. No problem. Thank you. Continue, Bye. guys. You're doing great. Great job out there. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.